Hello, and welcome to the StealthWatch tutorial series. My name is James Gill, and I'm a Technical Solutions Architect for Security Analytics at Cisco. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to enable StealthWatch to alert when attempts to violate segmentation policies occur on your network. Before we begin, let's review the benefit to doing this. In today's networks, segmentation is used to protect critical business information from access via unsecured systems or malicious users. Using StealthWatch, you can determine the needs of users and applications and model policies to verify their efficacy before putting potentially disruptive enforcement measures into place. In this exercise, we're going to configure StealthWatch to monitor a group of protected assets from the DHCP client area of the network. But before we do that, we need to define host groups for each of those ranges. A key concept in StealthWatch, host groups represent the function and context of each network entity. They can be defined manually using flow data in StealthWatch or automatically via API from a third-party data source. Here, we'll show an update based on IPAM data using automated scripts against the StealthWatch API. Let's take a look. Here in the StealthWatch user interface, we will go into the host group management configuration section where we will be able to see on the left that within the inside hosts group, the by location area of the host group tree is empty, as well as the protected asset monitoring group we will define. We will now initiate a script to update these host definitions via the API. Okay, that was fast. Now we can see that our by location host group tree is populated with several subgroups representing our branch offices and our protected asset monitoring group has been defined with some entities to protect. We can now use these groups to build policies to alert us when segmentation violations occur. For this, we'll go under configure, policy management, and create a custom security event. Okay, let's give it a name. I'll use a period at the beginning so it sorts to the top of the list. Now I'll turn the status switch to on so that we'll have the effect of generating alerts. In the alarm when box, I have a bunch of primitives I can use to define my event. Here I'll pull the peer host groups and set that to the protected asset monitoring group and hit apply. And now I'll use the subject host groups and set that to by function client IP ranges as that contains a bunch of different IP ranges defined by DHCP, including VPN. When I hit save here, the policy creation is complete and active, and we're ready to test our new event. To do that, I'm going to log in as a remote VPN user and grab some data off of our protected asset server. Okay, now I've connected to the VPN. I'm going to open up a browser and attach to my protected asset server. Clicking through the certificate warning and success. I got to a Tomcat server. Now I'm gonna try to connect via SCP. Okay, good. Now I'm going to copy this encrypted customer database file that looks pretty interesting down to my local PC. Just 
Just one more moment, and the data is mine. Now, let's go see what happened in the StealthWatch Management Console. Right away, we noticed that the policy violation number in the top row has incremented up by one, and there is a new entry in the top alarming hosts list on the left, and that one is from the remote IP VPN pool. When we click through the IP, we pull up the host report for this host, and we can see that it has indeed generated a custom security event for an unauthorized connection to protected assets. Bingo! Our alarm is working. Now let's go back to the StealthWatch dashboard and look at another way to investigate this alarm. By clicking on the three in the policy violation number up above, we're brought to a list of hosts with current policy violation alarms that are active. If we slide over to the right, we can see that remote VPN pool is the group that this host is a part of. Clicking through the IP again brings us to the host report page we looked at a moment ago. Another way to see what is happening here is to look at the protected asset monitoring host group report, where we will see that a large amount of traffic has come into the host group from the remote VPN pool. We can investigate that traffic by clicking through to pull back a top report or to click through to view the flows. Let's do that now. Each row in the resulting flow table shows me a conversation that happened on the network. I want to expose some more information about these conversations, so I'll go under Manage Columns and check the boxes for the pieces of information that I think will be relevant to this investigation. Now, when I scroll to the right, I can see not only the conversation information, but also TLS, process identification, and even the firewall disposition as this traffic passed through it. I hope you have found this tour useful. If you're interested in evaluating StealthWatch, sign up for a test drive at cs.co slash stealthwatchtd or learn more at cisco.com slash go slash stealthwatch. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.